Hello and welcome to this session of the Leadership and Management Process to Practice module. During this session we will start to develop understandings of both leadership and management, their relevant qualities and skill sets and within organisations. The learning outcomes for this session include gently appreciating a background to both leadership and management within the organisational context and through time, categorising the requisite qualities, duties and skills attributed to both leaders and managers, discussing the associated theories, traditionally and contemporary, that coincide with changing company personalities, the organisational context and its identifiable levels. And finally, witnessing issues that are present within the internal and external environments. This session sits within the first phase of the module as the digital lecture addresses fundamental and introductory definitions, assumptions and ongoing understandings of contemporary leaders and managers, realising the many responsibilities and traits of certain individuals within organisations today, underlines the importance of the leadership and management disciplines. Leaders and managers, as detailed within progressive empirical literature, identify the onus on organisations to interact with their workforce, competition, marketplace and wider society in positively contributing through its business activities. As detailed within this session, positive contributions can be evidenced through efficient and effective processes. That takes note of organisational issues. Overcoming these issues can equip, strengthen and embolden organisations as they enter or continue to engage with the market and society. As we shall see, these myriad of issues include situations and circumstances from both within and out with the entity itself. It should go without saying that, with the expansion of globalisation and advancement of telecommunication and availability of mobile technologies, the organisations operate more freely than past generations. The world is now much smaller, digitised, faster and more responsive than ever. In saying that, the evidence continues to document that over 98 or 99% of organisations are classed as small and medium sized enterprises. For small but ambitious organisations such as these, aspects of effective leadership and efficient management are critical towards success and longer term prosperity. An outward vision and awareness of the valuable human resource and volatile environment are just a few of these considerations. In essence, organisations must review, balance and progress many aspects of their capital going forward. As we've said, core and critical aspects of capital for any sized organisation must be acknowledged. These aspects of capital include financial capital, physical capital, social and or human capital and finally intellectual capital. These relate to sourcing the requisite funding, investment and income from the marketplace, acquiring the right resource to further construct or sell on to fulfil the profit motive of the organisation, constant awareness of engaging with the right people, whether that is appropriately targeting the market and build a sizeable customer base, or recruiting key talent to improve the knowledge of the organisation. And finally, set out to continuously seek to ascertain and act upon a gap in the market and add notable value to your company. These broad aspects of capital set a challenge for leaders and managers alike, resulting in their individual perspectives, practices and personas to emerge. To provide some additional backdrop for this session, it is worthwhile to consider how management, leadership and organisations in general have developed. Business and commerce originally was restricted to location and needs-based large-scale intake industries. Some travellers and enterprising individuals, however, would risk all that they had to achieve a standard of living. As technology progressed and mechanised forms of production were introduced, a revolution of mass production and increased transportation was apparent. This increased economics of scale and scope led to scientific management techniques and assembly line process manufacturing industries. Post Second World War ideals and universally accepted practices 
of organisations were conceptualised with comparisons drawn to achieve best practice amongst managers and leaders. This, coupled with the opening and expansion of markets, notably in Eastern Europe and Asia, led to the explosion of globalisation and worldwide networks of communication. Today, all organisations have the opportunity to be informed, equipped, creative and entrepreneurial. As highlighted, definitions of management and leadership are in abundance. Scholars seek to advance this knowledge for the benefit of many contexts and cultures. Our increased and relatively newly fast-paced understandings of leadership and management tell us that there is obvious crossover but simultaneous conflict between descriptions and typologies of leadership and management. Typically, management is traditionally regarded as dealing with procedure, rules, industry regulation and company codes of conduct. However, leadership is concerned with more intangible elements of organisational behaviour, being an inspiring, visionary to motivate individuals, groups, departments and organisations in general. As opposed to one another, as previously acknowledged, this categorises both between job-specific duties and more qualitative or interpersonal aspects relating to leadership. In relation to the standard but essential managerial duties of organisations, these include meeting legal requirements of the organisation, which include company registration, working conditions and contractual obligations to staff, contractors and partnerships. Additionally, financial managers are core to organisations and their ongoing performance and ability to perform in the marketplace. Organisations must continuously seek sources of income and consider this against expected and real expenditure. Furthermore, internal processes involve the planning, organising and execution of agreed plans and procedures, commonly known as the POLK acronym. Finally, through suitable and timely delegation of responsibility, the above plans and procedures can be addressed and completed. On a different note, the identification of a leader can be gauged against a number of qualities that are to be expected within the organisational context. These include confidently projecting the beliefs and values of the company, being approachable and available to discuss and debate a multitude of issues, continuously motivating and mentoring staff through periodic meetings and training initiatives. With this, an inherent notion that encourages lateral thinking and entrepreneurialism that empowers and inspires staff is also important and allows for a free, transparent and organisation that is represented by its hard-working employees. As alluded to earlier, management in practice has evolved. This has led to similarly evolved theory that conceptualises traditional to now contemporary management. Since the turn of the 20th century, scientific and bureaucratic ideologies of management has been replaced by more human-centric and employee-enriching theories. This is evidenced by the advent of human resource management organisational behaviour and cultural studies. These all document the changing world which inevitably impacts on how we work, trade and live. Leadership theories compared to management theories are rooted in these contemporary studies of behaviour and culture. Personal and interpersonal research is intersected with that of management and organisations. They also set timely and realistic goals which should include motivating language. At this level Benchmarking and performance related targets and benefits are regularly stipulated. Overriding aspects and consideration of an organisation are discussed at the organisational level. This includes the size and structure of the organisation, as well as regulatory frameworks and the setting of a company code of conduct as discussed previously. Objectives and a stated clear vision are also established within this level. As Gert Hofstede said, culture is how we do things around here. An organisation's culture is strongly rooted in its day-to-day -day activities and its beliefs and values that leaders and managers hold dear. The words they use, the traits of their staff and the visible artefacts and procedures also evidence what they are about and how they intend to operate. Internal issues disrupt all functional departments and levels within the organisation. These include and are never restricted to contractual pay and issues with staff, achieving a workable and efficient work-life balance, being aware of dysfunctional departments and poorly structured organisational hierarchies, poor communication and the poor adoption of valuable resources and technologies that are vital for given business activities. Similarly, there are a number of external issues that are ever present. These include the sourcing of valuable resources at competitive prices, the need to recruit and develop bright individuals to join their team, dealing with the competition and seeking that competitive advantage or USP status, 
and finally engaging with wider society, the media and protecting the valuable brand and associated products and services. The following tutorial task is designed to allow students to explore and apply the theory from this session. This session includes a case study tutorial exercise concerning the BBC. Awareness of real world issues within any organisation can help inform you of how these can occur in practice and also allow you to provide some practical and effective solutions. Such solutions then encourage these numerous managerial duties and qualities as well as inspiring leadership traits. So, question one. Would you describe George Entwistle as a leader or manager? Provide some explanation for your answer. Secondly, question two. What are the main management failings that can be identified in this case? Justify your listed answers. And finally, question three. In your opinion, what recommendations would you make to the new Director General following this crisis at the BBC? These recommendations relate to processes, practices or are people related aspects of an organisation.